But then something strange happened. He went back to Antarctica. Now, some of you aren't surprised, because he'd been there since 1928. And I agree with you. It's the how that's interesting here. His fourth trip to Antarctica wasn't an expedition. It was a military operation called Operation High Jump. Commanding an entire aircraft carrier group that included 13 support ships, Admiral Byrd led 4,700 men to the South Pole, for reasons that are still shrouded to this day. Some say they were chasing the remaining Nazi fleet, even though Germany had surrendered a full year earlier. Others say there was a Nazi base established in Antarctica during the war, when Admiral Byrd was absent. None of these theories are important for this video. What we do know is that the U.S. had sent an excessively large military force to the ice, all under the guise of peaceful intentions. During this operation, Admiral Byrd told a chilly newspaper this, The most important result of his observations and discoveries is the potential effect that they have in relation to the security of the United States. The fantastic speed in which the world is shrinking, recalled the Admiral, is one of the most important lessons learned during his recent Antarctic exploration. I have to warn my compatriots that the time has ended when we were able to take refuge in our own isolation and rely on the certainty that the distances, the oceans, and the poles were a guarantee of safety. After the operation, Admiral Byrd toured the States and gave interviews, the most interesting of which is a national television show in 1954 called The Long Ines Chronoscope. A horrible name, but a decent show. I've added a segment of it at the end of this video and linked it in the description. During this television interview, he first spoke of an area beyond the South Pole as large as the United States, which no one had set foot on yet. He then went on to say that there would probably be expeditions year after year because the U.S. government had really become interested. The interviewers then probed as to why the interest in the South, when any perceived military threat from Russia, keep in mind this was 1954, would be from the North. He went on to say that it was the most valuable and important place in the world for science. It involved the future of the nation, an untouched reservoir of untapped resources, including coal, oil, minerals, and uranium. He added that at the time of the interview, there were seven nations currently engaged in Antarctica, including Russia, Australia, Argentina, Chile, and New Zealand. During the interview, the Admiral talked about planning the next military mission to Antarctica. It was called Operation Deep Freeze and ran from 1955 to 1956. The mission was completed, and he supposedly returned home. Now this is where you come in and say, so what? And normally I'd agree with you, except for what happened next. Nothing happened next. The missions just suddenly stopped, and that was it. No other expeditions, military or otherwise, were conducted on the continent, ever. Then a treaty was put in place banning any country from doing basically anything. The end. And if you're wondering what you're missing, it's this. Admiral Byrd goes on television, says that this massive body of land, most of which sits on a plateau two miles high, is rich with every resource you could ever want, energy rich, pristine, with no indigenous population or plant life, and every country that has sent teams is ready to carve it up like a big turkey, not to mention there's an expanse of land larger than the United States they haven't even looked at yet. And out of the blue, everyone just calls the whole thing off? There are no environmentalists in 1959. This is land of diner food and 20 cent gas. I'm calling total BS on this one. The dollar value of the initial resources find would have fueled armies of greedy companies. So what happened? They found the edge, that's what. And the last thing they were going to do was let unsupervised companies near it, regardless of the money. Even if it was hundreds of miles away, you couldn't allow resource corporations, even into a safe area, and then years down the road as they expanded, tell them, oh, sorry, you can't go beyond this point. 
when the companies would ask why, what would you tell them? And now the interior of Antarctica is off limits, with no revisions until the year 2041. You can take tours of the outer islands, but there is a hidden line, enforced by the military, that you will not be able to cross. Because the interior is actually the exterior edge. It's there, it's hidden, and it's protected. The earth you live on is flat. So do some of your own research and ask questions. Please feel free to email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net or 303 494 um, So if the earth is flat, can we, can we fall off of it? If, are those legends true? Well, <clears throat> it's, it's still a mystery to me anyway whether there's an edge a barrier, like a dome at some point, or if it's an infinite plane. So the, the flat earth model is, well, the, the ball earth model has Antarctica uh, on the bottom of the ball. So no matter where you are on the earth, if you head south, eventually you'll end up at Antarctica. Now that's true on both models, because in the flat earth model, Antarctica is surrounding us 360 degrees, enclosing all the oceans, holding them in. And it's a wall. The Antarctica is literally a wall and then an ice plateau beyond it, which encloses the oceans. And early explorers uh, tried to find an inlet through the ice wall, uh, like uh, James Clark and uh, Captain Cook and... Um, I have them in my book, I can't remember all their names. Um, but th they went around the Antarctic ice wall and it took them years, three or four years, to go all the way around Antarctica, traveling many, many more miles than uh, Antarctica supposedly is on the ball earth uh, model. Um, so, but they didn't climb on top uh, of the ice. That only recently have, uh, have expeditions gone on top of the ice. And there's a big cover up there as well we can talk about. So as far as public information, we don't know how far along the Antarctic ice you can go, whether you'd be going for a while and then you'd get to an edge and, like you said, fall off into space, or whether there's a barrier or a dome of some sort, as, uh, as many cultures believed, or whether it's an infinite plane and it's just snow, ice, wind, and darkness forever. Um, that's still a mystery at this point. Is the whole flat earth um, idea, is that a, uh, a new idea? How long has this been around? No, the flat earth was worldwide for thousands of years um, before this spinning ball earth came around. The first person to think of the spinning ball earth was also uh, the first Freemason, Pythagoras of Samos. Most Freemasons uh, trace their... Um, ancestry of a fuel back to Pythagoras as being the first Freemason um, and that was 2,500 years ago but his idea didn't catch on at all until about 500 years ago when Copernicus, another Freemason and Jesuit uh, wrote his book um, promoting this spinning ball earth and uh, concept and then Kepler and Newton and Galileo they took it from there and now NASA and um, RASA and all the other space agencies, their experts like Carl Sagan and Neil deGrasse Tyson, they're continuing this heliocentric spinning ball earth gravity myth that's been going on for 500 years and they keep adding on to it now. Now you've got a big bang and evolution and aliens and one septillion other ball planets. And now they're, they're going to come out and say they've found life on other planets soon. They've already given us fake pictures from Mars claiming that uh, there's a pyramid and sphinx on Mars. We're told that the only thing that is is the amount of land that we tell you there is and everywhere else you can't go. You can't go to the North Pole and you can't go to the Antarctic without government approval and licensing. They have little tours that you, where you can go and take little photo ops. But you can't go yourself and explore what's actually at the North Pole and what's actually out along the Antarctic ice. How far does it go? Could we prove that the Earth is a ball? Uh, Matt Boylan, the ex-NASA guy I was telling you about, he's he's got a challenge going. 
he wants to go to Antarctica. He'll enter from any point and with his team, ropes and spikes, go straight southwards along the Antarctic ice and see, will he come up on the other side of the ball? Or will he hit a barrier or an edge? Or is it an infinite plane? But they won't let him or anyone else do that. Jarl Andahoy is another independent uh, sailor who's, I'm not sure if he's a what his views on the shape of the earth are but he really wants to go to the North Pole and to the Antarctic and he doesn't want to have to have government approval or go with their teams he just wants to do it they're supposedly no man's land so why can't we go to no man's land and explore for ourselves um, they've, they've fined him and put him in jail for, for even trying to do so hmm. um, yeah the Rodney Clough Rodney Clough uh, and his team he tried to go to the North Pole and they met uh, twice Russian uh, ships saying that they'd blow them out of the water if they continued and they were first forced to turn around so they're not allowed we're not allowed to, to take independent trips to the North Pole or to the Antarctic ice to confirm these kind of things for ourselves we're kept in the middle kept in the middle of area of earth all the time and told that that's all there is but if the earth really is flat and Antarctica is all around us then there's a lot more real estate than they could just saying that at this point, what is beyond the Antarctic ice is a mystery to the public and to me, and to, you know, to anybody that hasn't gone there. No flight has even gone over it. Nobody has ever circumnavigated the Earth from north to south. So no flights go over uh, the South Pole. They say it's too cold. So uh, we've circumnavigated east to west, but you can circumnavigate around a flat disk east to west, uh, no problem. So sailors and pilots that do that, uh, you can do that on a flat Earth just as well as you can on a ball Earth. Um, but what you can't do is go from the North Pole southwards, keep going southwards, and end up back at the North Pole. Smile.